จะมีเปล่าซาร์สเอาจริงชื่อเราชอบเราทำเราฟังแนนจะมีเข้าไปอยู่ในฟาร์มโอเคแล้วแอชเซนต์ที่ได้เป็นพาร์ทโอเซเนียไปยุบไปวิชาบริเวณ number four nine zero เป็นแนนแล้ว number four nine zero please stand Lord Jesus Emmanuel, you are the promised Messiah who brings light and life to your people. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus Emmanuel, you are the Redeemer who opens the way to salvation. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus Emmanuel, you will come in glory to lead us to return our life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end, her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. 
Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up on a, go, go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem we are going out to him and we have been baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear sisters and brothers, in this second Sunday of Advent, we are presented with the character of John the Baptist. He is one of the great figures of the Advent season, and indeed, one of the great figures of our Christian faith. We can learn so much from him about how he personally prepared himself to be a worthy witness to God in his life and about how he knew that his rule was the messenger and not as the Messiah. Through the story of John the Baptist, we learn a lot about how God seems to work. He uses us mere humans, but created in his image and likeness as his messengers to communicate his message of salvation to each other. So the vocation of each and every one of us to proclaim our witness to the good news is vital if God is to be known and loved. And we can start to learn how to do this by looking at the witness of John the Baptist. Reflecting on these readings, bring my privilege, my pilgrimage to the Holy Land over three years ago, vividly alive for me again, as I remember the visit to the wilderness, where the voice of John cried out with his message of repentance and preparation. We also visited River Jordan's bank, yet John the Baptist baptized Jesus. John's message of repentance was and is a challenging one, but it is also a very consoling one. And we must take time to reflect on what John meant by repent. It wasn't repent the way we think about it, down on our knees saying how sorry we are. John 
was talking about something quite different. He was talking about repentance as metanoia, the word that is used when we say, come back to the Lord. And what it really means is to turn your life around. Stop watching aimlessly and hopelessly in sinfulness and come back. He is calling. The Messiah is here. John the Baptist knew that sin was simply a failure to love and sin is still that. It is a failure to love, to do what you know you should do, to be the kind of person you know that you can become, to do and walk with Jesus. For Jesus has come for only one purpose, and it is to teach us how to love. The word power or mind can sometimes have negative echoes for us because when it is used wrongly it leads to deeming it leads to domination of others and we see so many examples of that misuse of power in our world today the power of the Lord that Isaiah speaks about in our first reading is of a very different kind. God is like a shepherd feeding his flock, gathering lambs in his arms, holding them in his breast, and gently leading the mother ewes who are due to give birth. This is a very tender power, a force of faithful and enduring love, a love that gathers and nurtures and reassures. This is the God whom John the Baptist invites us to rediscover this advent. It is this God who comes to us in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. In the Gospel, John the Baptist refers to Jesus as more powerful than I am. He is the more powerful one in the sense that the first reading defines power. It is Jesus who gives full expression to God's tender love that brings healing to the broken, strength to the weak, and rest to the weary. It is this adult Jesus, now risen Lord, who's coming into this world as a newborn baby we celebrate at Christmas. John the Baptist calls us this Advent to prepare a way in our lives for the coming of this Lord, this Shepherd, in whom as is said in the responsorial psalm, kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. This is the one we are called to meet this advent, the one who can give flavor and color to all our meetings, our relationships and our actions. Of course, we will fail in our attempts to be as tender and loving as Jesus showed us to be. But in our second reading, we can be consoled as St. Peter assures us that our God is a patient God. We just have to keep persevering in our efforts. Jesus had great respect for John the Baptist's followers and for John the Baptist himself. 
And Jesus even found his first disciples among the circle of John the Baptist's disciples. It was John who showed them the value of prayer and of fasting, who urged them to listen to the inner voice of God with a contrite and faithful heart. The high point of John's short ministry was meeting with Jesus. Not only did he baptize our Lord, but he sent some of his own followers to join Jesus. Through him, Andrew and his brother Peter and Philip and Nathaniel became apostles of Jesus. My dear sisters and brothers, God still wants us to help other people to know and love him. We can all do our bit, but we must also take care, like John the Baptist, to prepare ourselves to be worthy messengers, to be authentic witnesses whose actions back up our words. Parents can introduce their children to God, for example, with words about trust and prayer, but their words will only be effective if built on the example of their actual life. In all sorts of ways, people are in a position to influence others for good or for bad. Ordinary people doing ordinary jobs can influence the views and values of those they interact with. Taking the example of John the Baptist, does our way of speaking and behaving help others to share Christian values? Or do we confirm their suspicion that this world is a selfish and cynical place? Let us, my dear friends, pray for the grace to be worthy witnesses let us commit to making space through the grace of God to prepare ourselves to welcome Christ in our hearts so that our lives reflect our commitment to him in all that we do. I believe in one God.
and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, as we prepare our hearts and lives for the day the Lord comes, let us call to mind our needs and the needs of the world around us. For the church, that we may make straight the Lord's paths, allowing his presence to permeate our lives and the lives of people around the world, especially those desperate for comfort and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. I am here our prayer. For this Mass intentions for all that send prayer requests to St. Christopher, for those we promise to pray for, and for all our benefactors, let us pray to the Lord. For world leaders, that they may listen to the voices crying out in the desert, the voices of those who hunger and thirst for sustenance, justice, and peace, and for those struggling to make their way out of rugged lands and rough countries, immigrants, refugees, and those seeking asylum, that they may find strength and confidence in their faith as Isaiah and the exiles from Jerusalem did centuries ago. Let us pray to the Lord. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For those battling to escape wastelands of addiction, despair, or depression, that they may know God's comfort and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Oh, yeah. That through the intercession of Our Lady of Guadalupe, there may be a greater respect for life from conception to natural death, for abused children and for those in danger of being aborted, and for those who seek healing and reconciliation as the result of an abortion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the women and men in the armed services, our law enforcement personnel, firefighters, homeland security, first responders, healthcare workers, and all who risk their lives to protect and defend us, both home and abroad, and for those who have lost their lives protecting us, and for their families, that they continue to be in Jesus' merciful care, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who have been affected by the coronavirus, that they may be healed and for our protection from the virus, and for all those who experience hardship as a result of the virus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who mourn, that they may find comfort in the Lord, and for the deceased of our parish, and for all our loved ones who have gone to eternity, especially for Gerard Mumphrey. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. All our intentions, spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of all, you call us to repentance not just because we have sinned, but because you wish that all should live. Grant us the strength to seek forgiveness as you listen to the prayers we make through the one whose coming we long for. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. There's several announcements. The second collection this weekend is for repairs and maintenance. Sanctuary Life this week is burning for the St. Christopher faculty. There are no flowers on the sanctuary during the Advent season. Tuesday, December 8th, is the Solemnity of Immaculate Conception, which is a holy day of obligation. There will be a Vigil Mass at 4 p.m. on Monday, December 7th. Masses on Tuesday, December 8th will be 6.30 a.m., 9.30 a.m., School Mass, and 6 p.m. Nominations for the Pastoral Council are now open and can be made on the St. Christopher Church website or by the nomination forms that can be found in the church. The Archdiocesan Silver Jubilee Wedding Anniversary Celebration will take place on Sunday, March 14, 2021, at 3 o'clock p.m. in St. Joseph Church in New Orleans. If you will be celebrating a 25th wedding anniversary next year, married in the year 1996, and wish to attend, please register with the parish office by January 15, 2021. 
Please note, this celebration will not be a mass, but a prayer service. Attendance of mass for Sunday, <clears throat> excuse me, for Sunday obligation will have to be met within one's parish. Deacon Phil will lead an Advent mission Thursday, December 10th and Friday, December 11th in church starting at 6.30 p.m. This is a reminder for all confirmation candidates that the half-day confirmation retreat will take place on Sunday, December 13th at 3 o'clock p.m. in the parish center, and the next monthly meeting will be on Tuesday, December 15th at 6.30 p.m. in the parish center. Christmas giving tree. Our Christmas giving tree is now up, as you can see. Please select an ornament, purchase a gift, and return it to church by the weekend of December 13th. Be sure to put your tag on your gift when you return it. Your thoughtfulness will help, will help make someone's Christmas very special. God bless you for your generosity. And as you leave, we request that you please place the kneeler down in your pew to enable us to sanitize the church after Mass. Thank you for, for your cooperation.
sorry, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, Come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to return our salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day, may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we are claimed. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Gregory our Bishop, Fernandes Auxiliary and all the clergy and all the people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Christopher, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to return our life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory is yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. is going to be number 494 in the We Celebrate Hymnal, Come Light of the World, number 494.
let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our family prayer. In times of war, disaster, and epidemics, we come to you, Father, and pray our Father, and ask you to help us throughout the world today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us wisdom, that we may be able to find our lives with Jesus, which is our subject of life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may call their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be saved as a hard time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones to our homelessness. Hear our prayer and be with the perseverance to be a voice of life and human dignity in our community. May justice be Christ our Lord. Our Lady of God, Son of her peace and her voice. On the hand, we are to the very prayer for us that we may be a Special thanks to all those that have served at this Mass. Thanks to our ushers, our Eucharistic ministers. Thanks to our lector, and thanks to our altar servers. It's good to have the altar servers back again. <laughs> Special thanks to our cantor and our organist. And thanks to Europe for your active participation. Just to remind you that our Advent mission would be on the 10th and the 11th of this month. And we can feel this preaching in the two evenings. So please endeavor to come. That is one of the ways we do our own parish retreat when we are in these seasons like Advent and Lenten season. Also to remind us that the Christmas giving tree still has a lot of fruit to be plucked. <laughs> so I please invite you to pick one if you have not done so and put a smile on the face of a little child this Christmas. My joke, I told this morning when the Archbishop was here and I want to share it with you this evening. You know the English word called complete is hardly distinguished from the word finish. So one Indian American, Sun Summer, gave a distinguishing factor between the two words which will make you really laugh. He said, when a man marries the right woman, then he is complete. <laughs> but when a man marries the wrong woman, then he's finished. <laughs> <laughs> and then he went further one more time to say that when the right woman catches you with the wrong woman, you are completely finished. <laughs> so we pray that God will make us complete and not finish through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. 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 As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, 
and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in our battle. Be our protection against the weakness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Our closing hymn is number 974. It will be celebrated soon and very soon. Number 974.